One of my real interests lately, and I think it's going to be true now for the next few years, maybe to the end of my career, has to do with automated knowledge. Um, I think if there's any insight that I've had, it was not mine, it got it from other people, but the one that's been the most powerful for me in the last five to ten years is that most of all human knowledge is automated and unconscious. That what we're actually consciously aware of is such a small, tiny portion of what we know that, it's, that we have to learn more about this automated knowledge or what some people call implicit knowledge or expertise. There's a whole lot of names for it. Uh, what we find is that when you ask an expert how to do something, and we actually call it the 70% principle now. They are not going to tell us about 70% of the mental capacity, the, me the mental operations they have to perform in order to, to succeed in their area of expertise. These are operations that allow them to, to pattern match, to see what, what kind of problems they need to solve, and when they find a problem that, that needs solving, to, to know exactly what steps to take in order to solve it, what kinds of decisions need to be made, and so on and so forth. That, when they do this over and over again, it automates. I think this is John Anderson's view, it's the view of a whole lot of people out there, and yet it is not well understood in generally, despite the, even the popular books about it lately. Uh, Blink, you know, and so on and so on, all these popular, this is, we're doing this now in the year, what, 2011, 2012, and we've just come through a number of books about advanced expertise that are popular books because education completely rejects the idea, more or less, or at least they haven't yet understood that your job in schools, if you're going to promote learning, is to try to teach people so that they as can quickly as possible can automate what they learn, so they don't have to think about it anymore, so their minds then are free to learn new things, because that's the purpose of our conscious mind, that's the purpose of working memory. And then I began to think about all the consequences of the fact that most of our knowledge is automated, so automated that we are not even ourselves aware of it. And one of those things is, who teaches? Experts. And we get people who know something about math, we say, you go teach math. Well, they know math, they don't know anything about teaching. Let's be clear about that. They don't even know what they know about math, or any other field for that matter. The third thing about this automated knowledge thing that I think is critical is, an, is, is a whole series of insights that are available now in social psychology. And almost nobody outside of social psychology is talking about it. it yet it swept social psych, and that is that this automated knowledge is not just how to do things, it's should you do it. In other words, it's intentions, it's goals. And the view is that not only are we not in control of much of what we do, we think we are. Now that view is not just in social psych, it's validated in neuroscience. I mean, for 20 some years we've known in neuroscience that if you ask a person, to, you tell a person you're going to ask them to make a decision. The decision can be something as simple as, you know, put two fingers up, and in a second, I want you to move one, but don't decide now which figure you're going to move. Now, move it, and they will go this, and they'll say, when did you decide? Well, just now, I decided to move that finger. They can see on an MRI that you decided the moment you understood what the task was. You made that decision, but you believe you didn't make it till just before you moved it. Well, that's a simple task. Somebody says, well, so I get all excited about that it turns out that almost all decisions are the same way. And that most of the decisions we make we're not even aware of making. That's number one. Number two is that we can have very clear goals and very clear values about what we want to accomplish. And something can happen in our environment that completely changes our goals. And we are not aware of what it was. And if we do reflect on it, we believe that we changed our mind. When in fact, we didn't. There's a whole lot of literature now on something called priming. Okay? Obvious but not so or not so obvious features in our environment that when we see them or when we more or less scan them, when we take them in a bit, have a huge impact on not only our intentions, but on what we do cognitively. This automated cognitive knowledge.
these things have been out for so long. There's a guy named John Bark who had a, a, a book a few years ago about the myth of, of, uh, of intentionality, the myth of making self-decisions. It got a huge splash and then nobody paid attention to it. And I think unless we take into account in education, particularly in instructional technology and anybody concerned with learning, that most of what controls learning is automated and unconscious, and most of what people learn is only valuable to them or is primarily valuable if they can turn it into an automated cognitive and motor routine that accomplishes that goal and then do it in such a way that it can be generalizable, that it's not so tied to or specific to the context where you learned it. That is going to be the biggest challenge in the next two decades or three decades in my view. Thank you.